Stampin' Friends, Darlene with Darlene Stamps. We're going to go through the uh, unboxing and the alternates for this month's Paper Pumpkin. What a great way to have some card therapy and all the work cut out for you. I mean, this is the, the great uh, kit that comes, and it comes with all your envelopes. It comes with making eight cards. I actually can get sometimes up to 16 cards because of the alternates, which I will show today. And then you have this instructions. So there is no um, um, basic, well, there and there's a little ruler here at the end so you can measure your cards. But when it comes to uh, doing cards, sometimes people think there's a lot that has to be done or you have to know. But look at these beautiful cards. I mean, the it's already cut for you. All of these um, embellishments are already done. Um, the different kinds of sentiments. And this card, it has, it has anniversary, it thank you, it has dad, brother, uncle, son, grandpa, husband, nephew. I mean, it gives you a plethora of options and of course Father's Day. So um, let's get started and uh, because these are real self-explanatory, I want to focus on the alternates today. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to bring out my alternate card. So we'll start with our card base, and here's my handy dandy uh, scraps. I try to keep some of these cards already done. And then we're going to, because score this, now the card is is a 8.5 by 11, uh, cut at 5.5, and, and we're going to score this at 4 and a quarter. And remember on our cards, the light side, the valley goes out. And that gives our nice crisp edge. Then we're going to use the, um, in the, in the uh, kit, it actually shows what color coordinating with our stamp set. So this is mint, mint macaron. When you do your layers, always come in a quarter of an inch. That gives you a nice border right there. Remember, I like to use um, the inside for um, optimum use. So I am going to actually use my Daisy Punch. And we are going to use this right here. You know, I like having cards that are easy to make, put together quick. And if I can show you some of those tips then that makes your cards just as pretty as well. Okay, now remember, back to our cards. So our base is crumb cake. Our layer is mint macaron. So we've got two of them so far. Now we're going to have our white piece. And the white piece, we're not going to pop out. Let me show you something real quick. Do you see how on my cut, there's this little fray edge where... And if I turn it over, then that's not going to show. But sometimes I have put it down, and lo and behold, I've already glued it, and there's this little edge. You can take your bone folder and actually smooth out that edge. Oop, I got glue on it. <laughs> and you can smooth out that edge, and that gives you a nice crisp side. Since we're not going to be stamping on this, I'm going to go ahead and put it down. I'm not sure about you, but sometimes I've glued this down and then I stamp and I've messed up the stamp. So, and you see I've gotten a mark on here. So let me put the mark where I'm going to actually cover it. So that's going to be out of our mix. And then what we're going to do, you see how the envelopes have this really nice like designer paper. I call it designer paper. So I want to remix or use the envelope. And we are going to just cut. Now remember our inside piece is measures. Hold on. We have our little measuring right here. Measures four and a quarter by three and a half. So four 
quarter by three and a half. Okay, so we want to come in with our designer paper a quarter inch on each side. All right. Okay, so we're going to take because I like this nice, I like this nice edge right here that has the uh, the wood grain. So we are going to chop off our piece here just so I can get a nice crisp edge. Oops, not the score. <laughs> not the score. Okay. So here is our piece. And remember we needed uh, four and a quarter. And we're going to come in a quarter. So it's going to be four. Boy, doesn't that seem like it's a lot? Of course it is because I measured wrong. Oh, I'm so silly. Goodness gracious. This is three and a quarter by two and a half. Okay, Whew, that was a good save. All right, well, that say uh, measure twice, measure, yeah, measure twice, cut once. Okay, <laughs> so, so, all right, so we've got three and a quarter, and I wanna get this off, then I can measure my three and get this off. All right, now I've got some clean cuts. Okay, so we've got, Three and a quarter. Whoops. <laughs> it, it makes a difference when I'm doing it live. Okay, three and a quarter. And that, whoop, we need to come in our quarter. Sorry. There's our three. Okay. And then two and a half. We're going to do two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Oops. Whoop, I want that wood grain. Two and a quarter. Voila. Okay, so now we've got some good, there, and that goes right in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna use the inside of this envelope and get our little piece that will be our little banner that hangs out there. So for the sake of time, I am going to just make our little indent and I have a punch that does this, but it's in the other part, so I cut it right in half can't see it very well from that side, so I can go corner to that edge, corner to that edge. There. And now I have my piece. Okay. So that's going to be our little banner. And this is going to go on top. But before we do this, I want to make sure we get our ribbon. Okay, our ribbon is actually the natural burlap. That's what we're gonna use. And I've already pre-cut that. So let's just get this on here. Remember, I don't like using any waste on my pieces that are gonna be covered. So let's cut out some butterflies just cause the punch is right here. Put those there. Now I can put this guy right in center okay and i want to get this one on and we'll put it kind of close to that edge okay all right so this is going to go here and then our burlap or our little burlap ribbon is going to go right around it so i want to put piece there just so it stays straight because I'm not sure about you but I get to their side and go now what did I do how come that didn't work and this is going to just tuck in right there but that is not going to stay all right so we're going to there little snail I have had several ribbons that I've used this I'm trying to stay manly, so I didn't want to do a bow. All right, now it's ready to be applied, and I can snail that right on. I try to snail over that ribbon, just oops, so I can get that on. I want to have it peek out on both sides, so right, oops, there. 
I like the snail because um, I can get it straight and then if it's not, I can move it around. See how my edge has kind of been buckled? So I got my bone folder to get that straight. Okay, we are coming together nicely. So now we're gonna use the embellishment that already came in the kit and the stamp set we are going to just use our block and we're going to use the mint macaron now this is going to be our this is our old style the new style is coming out it won't have this whole rock and lock kind of thing so it'll be easier same pad size same color just different design all right so i want to make sure i like the polymer because you can see through it and make sure you don't have any extra ink that may show up because once it's inked man you are stuck all right so there now we've got our little pretty banner there and then i want to do and i love you i did that with the other one so i guess i'll stay with that same theme and sometimes people have oh oh i just noticed and this is what's nice. It actually went on crooked. So I can see it straight from, whoop, straight from there. And in the middle goes, I love you. Sometimes I've used um, my piercing mat to give me a little bit of cushion because these don't have cushion. But it turned out good. So we are going to leave it just like that. And because of our layer with the wood green DSP from the envelope and the ribbon, um, this is not gonna lay very, very flat. So we're going to use um, dimensionals. I keep mine in an old case, the ones that come from Paper Pumpkin, some scraps I've got, so I try to, and of course, they call these bones. All of the dimensions are gone, but the bones are there. So um, it's a pretty big space, so I don't want to use real small ones. And I want to make sure it's not going to rock and have, you know how it like sags sometimes? So I don't want any saggy banner, banners. I see saggy pants all the time from people, but we don't want saggy banners. Okay, so I'm almost done with this. Whoops. There. And part of my um, hope in doing alternates is that uh, it can really um, kind of give some inspiration, kind of some energy juices, creative juices to um, maximizing your kit. Okay, so now I need to decide See this one, I went, I stayed even with my, with my um, layer piece. So I think I'll do the same thing with this one, just so I can stay consistent with that. Okay, so coming together nicely. Now I want to add a little bit more dimension. These are our uh, candy dots that we have, and because my, I've tried using different ways of getting these little suckers off. But I don't seem to have a way. There we go. Um, and we're going to put these right here. This will add a little bit of um, um, like dimension, uh, embellishments. They kind of give you a wow factor. And that's what I want is a wow factor. Now, I have only two of the small ones. I was going to jump to a big one, but I don't know if I want to do that. So that's what's nice about doing it. So there is our first alternate. Is a um, little different. This I actually cased. That means, casing means that you see um, someone else's creative, wonderful work and you copy it either identical or similar. So this the, the daisy punch and the background is similar to a different different um, card that I saw. And then I wanted to, of course, stay in the theme of our accents, our words, and our paper. So, um, so we are going to make this today. Now, in doing so, we're going to take a 8.5 by 11. Rather than scoring it, I am just going to fold this. Oh, you see how the edge frayed? So I want to use that for the inside. All right. 
Now, just so you know, see how the edges, I'm sure you can see that. See how it kind of gives me a crease. So I wanna make sure that's my back. But sometimes if you if you don't score, your line does not get crisp. So, but this is a better side. So we're gonna use this side. And then we are going to use my little ruler so that you guys can see that. I have this side, but this is, uh, my other side of my grid paper is metric. And, I don't do that one very well. So we're just going to use this grid. So we've got our ruler here. We have a three and a quarter by three and a half. So that is our base piece. And then this is the inside of, remember, our, our envelopes. And so this little plaid piece is going to be a half or quarter, sorry, quarter inch um, on just the two sides, which makes that right in the center. And then our white piece, which is going to go inside, is going to be a two and an eighth by a two and seven eighths. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seven eighths. Whew. Okay. All this high math. So here we are with our card. Let's start building the case. So we've got our timeless textures. I'm going to use this piece right here, stamp. And oh, I already have it on. Huh. All right. And as I build this, we are going to use the mint macaron. Mint macaron. Put that one on top give it a quick i have my scrub pad over here give that a quick change and then we're going to use the gray in the middle gray in the middle okay and then we are going to use crumb cake Ooh, make sure my stamp is on have you ever had when you when you get your stamp on and you got it all in there, you get your ink on and it falls off? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Then you get to all over again. But you know what's nice is that you can just flip that thing over and start all over again. All right, there's our three pieces. And then we are going to see how the daisy looks like it's uh, 3D and it has it's uh, very full. So we're going to stamp, this is an early espresso. We are going to stamp our daisy right in the middle with early espresso. And that way it's a little bit darker on that. And then we, I've already punched my, already punched, or not punched, <laughs> I already stamped my daisy punch. We are going to punch that out. And I want to get the center, but I figured I would just get this on here. Do, 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 do. Get everything back in its place. All right. And then I want to stamp this espresso. Crumb cake. This espresso. Oh, I have too many open. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I'm going to stamp off and stamp on because I didn't want the center to be like a wow factor. All right, before I start getting ink on all my hands and my projects, let's close these suckers up. Okay. Okay, so now, now we've got our building. We're building our, our base here and our layers. So I want to get this... And I don't have my other punch, so I guess I will just use, well, I'll just keep using this little butterfly guy. All right, use that for another project. Okay, so we're going to put our layer piece on here. And part of my um, thought process in doing cards is I, I like having layers but I don't like having bulk. So if you haven't uh, watched my Thrifty Thursday, I actually talk about how to reduce the bulk in your card. So if you get a chance, hop over on my channel. You can watch the other videos. So we are going to, so I try to get 
um, sometimes that bulk also adds more postage. So, okay. Now, because I want this to stay 3D, I have all of my layers all packed together. Now I'm gonna apply it to my card. And I didn't want to do any type of ribbon or lace. Let's see, I need to get my, get my thing here so I can get straight. All right, right there, okay? All right, now I'm gonna take the bone folder and I'm gonna curl these little petals up. And I've got my little dots so that I can get every little dot on there and the petals don't have any waywardness about them. I mean, you can blow flowers and, and uh, daisies are nice to pick and that nice little forget-me-nots. I like daisies, daisies make me happy. They're a happy flower. And so these little dots will get a great um, stick to it. They'll stick where I want them to. And then I'm going to put one right in the middle. All right. I'm going to put my, uh, my piercing tool close because I want to make sure. Now offset it. All right. And then I want to make sure I get my stickums. And I, and I want my 3D, so I'm going to, when I glue those dots down, it allows me to lift that just a bit because I want it to be 3D. Ah, it's already sticking. No, 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 no. Whew, okay. And, see, there's so many leaves. Holy moly. I'm oh, not leaves. Ugh, petals. Mercy me. Okay, there. You see, can you see the little dimension to that? All right, and then before I get too carried away, I want to get Wink of Stella in the middle just because it adds a little bit of glimmer. Now that'll dry. And while that's drying, let's work on the bottom stamping. So we have two stamps we're going to use. Well, three actually. Uh, we are going to use the, um, the set and this is the little like starburst kind of thing. And I don't want to use everything brown. So let's use the mint macaron. And let me stop right there. I'm not going to do that because when I did this, see, I was able to stamp first, then do this where it's going to be um, positioned correctly. So I don't want to do that yet. So let me back up two steps because I don't want to give you guys the wrong step and then I want your projects to look nice. All right, so we're going to have on here, thank you friend. And there's my thank you. Let me line this up. The grid paper works really, oop, that's birthday. Oh, let's do bank group. Let's do birthday instead. I have a thank you, but let's do birthday instead. Birthday to you. And of course, then, of course, I have to do happy. Hello. All right. There's that. And I better get that closer. It's not going to work out right. So a couple things. When you're lining these up, sometimes you're not going to be able to get... Oh, I just had an epiphany. This is what happens when you get to, get to working on this. So our crumb cake. Oh, crumb cake. So I'm going to do, because as I'm, I'm kind of creating this because the, this one I already did, but now I'm changing it up. So I can kind of give you an idea of how the creative juices work. Because I got two you on there, but now I want to do happy birthday. See, so that means I need to do happy and birthday on the same Add happy birthday because now I can get it closer, you know. Because sometimes these stink the, the stamps you can't get right on, 
Okay, so now let's see if we can get this to work right. Ta-da! Oh, I did green! Son of a gun! <laughs> okay, you're seeing all kinds of boo-boos today. <sighs> well, that's what makes it nice, especially when we're creating something absolutely new. So we're going to do happy birthday to you. Oh, my tea didn't go. All right, this is a quick save. Give me one second as I get... Oh, I have it right here. This is our blender pin. And I'm going to show you real quick. So my little Y didn't show up right quick. If you use your blender pin, make sure I have the right color, tap on that. And I can actually... I know my Stamparatus I could use, which I didn't do right now. But... Um, and if it didn't get enough ink on it for whatever reason... I could just re-stamp it and the positioning tool is fabulous. Okay, just changed and fixed that Y. Ta -da! And then this cleans off and ready for the next color. It's kind of like a like a marker pen with no color. And then whatever color you you dab it on, that's what it turns out. Okay. So now, now I can do my little starburst. And we're gonna do woo, see it's a good thing I didn't put it on because I would not have had room. And there you go. So we have two different ones, two different, different, same style, different sentiments. And that's what makes it nice. You can get uh, several cards done. And with this set from, from the Paper Pumpkin, and if you haven't uh, had a, don't have a subscription, Think about this as an option to your stamping therapy, as your hobby. It's already pre-done for you. And then, of course, if I can send you some wonderful alternates, then that just expands your kit even more. I hope you've enjoyed this session, and we will look forward to seeing you again. Check out my other videos. I try to make sure they're fun, creative, and helping you make your card therapy amazing. Have a great day.